Friends, I need your help. On June 3rd, I am going to be participating in the Florida Club Managers Association Marathon Golf. This event directly supports some amazing children's charities like the Special Olympics, the First Tee, SOS Children's Villages, and Place of Hope, and many more. The goal of Private Club Radio, which means my goal and your goal as a listener, is to raise $10,000 in direct support of these charities. If you've ever had a hand up in your life, I implore you to join and participate in this fundraising effort. If this show has helped you in any way, you know that I very, very rarely ask you for anything, but I'm asking you to please help. I'm going to try to golf 100 holes, and just like a walkathon, you donate a specific amount per hole played. And if I can get to 100, that is the goal. It's going to happen on June 3rd, so you need to do it before June 3rd. Head on over to privateclubradio.com slash marathon and pledge your support. I'm counting on you, so please head over to privateclubradio.com slash marathon. Welcome to Private Club Radio, your weekly source for industry education, news and discussion. Broadcasting from Tampa, Florida, ladies and gentlemen, here is your host, Gabriel Aloisi. Well, for all you Game of Thrones fans out there, it is over. It's over. The last episode was last night. A lot of people are upset with it. Some people were okay with it. I haven't heard anyone yet that was really pleased with it, but... I'd say I'm somewhere around C minus. I'd give C minus to the to the finale. The thing is, there's just no good way to end something that great. It just can't happen. <laughs> so you've got to just be okay with it. In my opinion, that's what I, that's how I think of it, anyways. And the PGA Championship also finished up yesterday. So what a great day to be sitting on your couch like a blob. And I know most folks listening to this show don't do that, anyways. You probably caught it on your DVR. But Kepka won his fourth major tournament. He was actually my pick. In fact, my dad was at a casino in Nevada and asked me who he should put a few bucks on. And I said, you got to put it on Kepka. But he didn't take my advice. So he missed out on a nice 12 to 1. Sorry, dad. You got to take your son's advice. <laughs> well, he did make it a little interesting. Brooks uh, on the back nine. He faltered there. I think he had four bogeys back to back, but he got it back. That's what a true champion does in the face of adversity. He only takes it up to the next level and really buckles down and finishes the job. Just a great lesson for us all. Golf is filled with so many wonderful lessons every single weekend, every single time you go out and play. That's just why it's the best game on the planet. Well, today's guest is one that you have heard on the show before. Her name is Hannah Eanes of the Professional Club Marketing Association, and Hannah is going to share with us three tips on creating an internship program at your club and how to make it the most effective that it can be. I really enjoy this interview, and I know you will too. Here it is. And now it's time for your monthly membership insights brought to you by the Professional Club Marketing Association. Well, it's my pleasure to welcome Hannah Eanes, Director of Member Relations at the Professional Club Marketing Association, back onto the show. And today's topic, we're going to be talking about internships at private clubs. And the first question I want to ask you, Hannah, is why are you so passionate about internship programs at clubs? Right. Thank you so much for letting me kind of start with that. I think, you know, one of the reasons or a couple of the reasons probably I am so passionate about internships within the private club industry is because my career was actually jump-started by an awesome and well-rounded internship experience, but also because I've had the opportunity to mentor a large number of interns throughout my professional career, and it's really been so rewarding to watch them succeed after being given the opportunity to actually influence operations within an entity. Um, also, I just feel because someone kind of took a chance on me early in my career, I really wanted to pay it forward. Um, so at PCMA, we've been offering a conference internship opportunity since, what, 2016, I think, our Kansas City conference. And uh, since 
we are in Dallas this year, we're actually working with the University of North Texas to interview and identify some students to assist with our 2019 conference. Um, the feedback that we have gotten following these experiences through surveying the participants um, has been really, really inspiring. And it's kind of been encouraging us to really help our PCMA member clubs to figure out how to create and structure internship opportunities with their, within their organizations. So I'm excited to kind of touch on that today. Yeah. Why, why in, in your mind, is uh, internship such a good opportunity? Sure. I think, you know, the spotlight on private club communications and marketing is only growing brighter and the need for talented and dedicated efforts within the membership and marketing department is becoming essential. We see a huge opportunity for our affiliated clubs to benefit from implementing a successful internship experience within their membership, marketing and communications departments. Um, because what used to be a department of one is now demanding really a team to handle the growing workload required to facilitate membership development and engagement within private clubs. Um, I think, you know, one thing that really helps this make sense is that the generation of intern talent that private clubs have access to, they naturally possess a lot of the personality traits, the habits, and the interests that are in alignment with private club membership and marketing and, and communication. They're tech savvy. They're, e they're eager to learn. Um, this makes them a great resource for researching, implementing, and maybe even managing some of the trending various online tools that private clubs are finally, you know, deciding to adopt. And so um, membership marketing and communications in turn can be applied in a variety of different ways. Um, they can build communication schedules. They can work with department heads to develop and curate creative content for the various communication outlets. They can track and maybe analyze some online metrics and reporting. Um, they can design promotional pieces just, to, you know, to rattle off an easy view when it comes to marketing and communication. Um, they're also really relationship oriented, and this makes them a perfect fit for supporting and for influencing membership me, membership relations programming and also membership engagement pro programming. Um, you know, we, we think or we feel that that clubs can enlist, you know, their fresh eyes and their fresh perspective in reviewing and, and maybe making recommendations to the club's new member assimilation or, or onboarding process, inviting them to brainstorm and assist in planning some creative new member events. You know, every every college student or so many college students, you know, they want to be event planners. And so, you know, really uh, tapping into that, you know, could be a, a benefit. Um tasking them with to-dos pertaining to member surveys. These are all things that could result in a win-win outcome for both the club and, and the intern. Yeah. I just had an intern in my office who he's on vacation right now because he's graduating from the University of South Florida with his master's. Yes. He started off as an intern and uh, he's got his first job. We're hiring him as well. So I, I really believe in, in, in putting people up the ranks like that. It's fantastic. Now, you've also got uh, three tips for us on successful internship experiences. So I'd love for you uh, to go through those with us, Hannah. Awesome. I, I would love to. And I'm so glad to hear that you had an, a successful experience because I think, you know, now you see when you put in the time and effort and invest in someone, it, it really can benefit you in the long run. So so that's great to hear. Yeah. Um, you know, when kind of thinking about, you know, tips that pertain to implementing a program in reflecting back on both my experience as an intern myself, and as a mentor to a variety of interns over the years, um, there are kind of a few common themes that seem to consistently result in a rewarding experience. And, and those, those three things are, are really being um, goal-oriented, really being focused on projects, and being committed to meetings. And so, you know, if you're a club that's thinking about an internship program, those are kind of, you know, the three things that you really need to consider before you decide to implement and move forward in, in interviewing and hiring. Because if you're not committed to setting some goals together, if there aren't some projects that you can allocate to the program, and if you don't have the time to, to set aside for regular meetings, you know, you're really not setting yourself up for success from the beginning. So we'll talk about each of these in a little bit more detail. Um, as it pertains to goals, I think it's really important to get a clear understanding up front of what your intern is looking to gain 
from working with you and also communicating your own expectations. This will this will really help set the relationship up for success. Um, if you can agree upon goals together, this can really guide your combined efforts um, and ensuring there's transparency when it comes to the expectations of both sides. This really helps to earn trust from the intern because you've included them in the process and you've shown them that you value what's important to them and that you're on board with, you know, helping them, you know, work towards that goal. Um, I think, too, setting goals together in advance will also offer a guideline for how the intern's job responsibilities and tasks should be scheduled and focused. You know, I don't know how many interns I've talked to that have been super excited about a club internship and they they end up being a little bit deflated because they worked in the snack bar all summer, you know, and, and not that that can't be a part of the learning experience. But, um, you know, by really understanding the goals of that individual up front, you can, you know, really think about how their tasks should be scheduled throughout the duration of their internship just to ensure that you're meeting their needs and they're coming away from from your organization with a positive experience. Um, We always survey our interns after their conference experience, and we specifically ask if, you know, the experience is is in line with what they expected. And we've always gotten 100% positive yes. Um, and then some. And so, you know, we feel really confident that, um, you know, we do a good job of that. And, and it, it obviously comes back to really understanding the goals of the people that are involved. So um, with that said, you know, I'd love to move on to a really important one. And, and this is projects. And I think this is something that kind of falls between the cracks. And so I, I want to spend a little time talking about this. Um, I think it's really important to give your interns something specific that they can work on and that they can take ownership of. Um, I think this helps show them that you have confidence in their abilities. It gives them flexibility to be creative. And it also makes them accountable for the results. Um, By doing this, you're really strengthening their resume. So you're doing them a service there. And you're helping them create a portfolio of work examples that they can reflect back on and that they can reference during a future job interview. Additionally, having something that they can take pride in overseeing, it really helps them to feel more connected to you and to your team and hopefully less likely to maybe let any balls drop on their watch. Um, Each time, again, that we have surveyed our interns about how they feel about what they can accomplish, um, they they share how appreciative they are to have been trusted members of our team, um, to to have been trusted with tasks and to be able to take ownership of, of getting things done. And, you know, a lot of them, you know, simply say, we'd love to do this again. We would love to do more. Is there anything else that we can do, you know, following the event? Um, And so I think really focusing on what projects can be assigned to the interns in advance of embarking on on the program um, will be a a huge key in, in the success. And then last but not least, being committed to regular team meetings with your intern. This is a huge one. Their generation values inclusion, um, and as mentioned earlier, they really want to be connected. And so making sure that you have time to commit to meetings with your intern and to spending quality time together is is a huge piece um, when you're thinking about getting started or or maybe improving the program that you have. Um, These regular meetings, they obviously give your intern specific time to ask questions, and when they have that time to ask questions, it gives them a sense of being acknowledged by you. Um, they checking in regularly, I think also hold you both accountable for reviewing where you're at in the, in the program. Um, it kind of takes, it gives you the opportunity to take a look at your progress together and then it gives you the opportunity to make assessments and make adjustments and, um, implementing changes that could really help, you know, improve the rest of the duration rather than kind of looking back and, and feeling like it was subpar. Regular meetings kind of give you that excuse or that opportunity to, to really make some good adjustments if they're necessary. Um, I think another neat thing is inviting your interns to spend time together and um, making them a priority really encourages them to do good work. Um, one of the things that our interns always comment on in the post-event survey is how much they valued Um, the conversations and spending quality time with our team by being included in meetings or by being invited to professional breakfasts, 
professional lunches and professional dinners. You know, they really appreciate that acknowledgement and, and that, um, I guess, trust that you show when you invite them to kind of spend time with you above and beyond kind of maybe their line level tasks and responsibilities. And so really looking for opportunities to meet with them, connect with them, and, and spend time with them is, is a huge key. So I know that was a lot, Gabe, but those are kind of, you know, like I said, when reflecting back on both my experience as an intern and, and working with all the interns that I have in the, in the last few years, um, those are the big things that stand out. Yeah. Well, I love those tips. Uh, the, the one in particular I, I really resonate with is the setting expectations, that first tip you gave. I think that is so important so that it's not just what you can get out of the intern, but what they can get out of the internship and what skills they want to learn and what will give them the best chance of success inside of your organization or if they leave it. And um, I think that's that's really critical. So that's fantastic. And you're right, uh, regular meetings, really huge. That's been important. important. And then just getting that constant feedback loop going with them. Are they learning? Right. Are they learning? Are they getting what they want out of it? And that does help them contribute more. So I've definitely seen that. We've, we've had a couple of, couple of interns now, I guess, that have become uh, staff members of, of my agency. And it's amazing that the, the younger generations, they're, they're very sharp <laughs> and they bring a different, right. a completely different set of ideas to the table. And um, for that reason alone, I think that uh, it's wonderful to get some interns into your club. So I really right. appreciate those tips. Uh, have you seen any clubs uh, in particular, Hannah, that have utilized interns in a, in a, in a different way or in a, in a, in a better way? Sure. You know, we've had some, actually, one of our conference interns became um, a team member of one of our PCMA uh, member clubs following the conference event. And that individual started as kind of an, an administrative support person um, and has since moved up into a leadership role within the membership office and now has just recently taken a new job, another promotion, you know, within the industry. And so I think nice. this is an example of like everything else. You get out of something what you put into it. And I think if you really take time and invest in these young people, um, you know, they're the future of our industry. They could be the future leaders within your organization. Um, you know, there's so much turnover in our industry. And so really by investing and in, in developing these relationships with the young people, um, I think that that's, you know, one of the things that we can primarily do to, to set our, set our ourselves up for some longevity. Yeah, it's going to be vital. I, I hear from all the experts that the, the, one of the biggest, if not the biggest problem facing the private club industry right now is a lack of talent. And so again, starting them off young, getting people in college excited about this industry rather than going into the hotel or resort world is going to be vital to the long-term viability of the private club industry. Cause if there's not people working there, um, <laughs> there's not much, uh, that's not, not much that's going to happen at our clubs. Unfortunately, got to have right. people there. So that's fantastic. Now the PCMA has a wonderful conference coming up. I'd love for you to just remind folks of what's happening in Dallas in September. Awesome. Yes, we are hosting our 24th annual conference in North Dallas this year. It will be September 23rd and 24th of 2019. We love our conference experience. It's quick. It's easy to get in and get out of um, rather than spending a full week. Um, we have, what, two and a half days of awesome programming prepared for you um, we have a couple of unique club experiences planned, one at the Four Seasons Golf and Sports Club. This is a really neat wellness opportunity to explore their new equipment, their healthy living resources, sample some of their, their group exercises, and, and get, a, get a tour of that beautiful club. We also have a signature networking party planned at beautiful Dallas Country Club. This will surely be an unforgettable evening. We're really excited about that. Um, and then we have an awesome mix of educational opportunities planned. Um, we have some general all attendee sessions. We have some breakout sessions and panels. We have something called breakout roundtables, which we're really proud of. And, and this is where we kind of divide the group into like-minded um, like like minded subgroups and, and really give them the opportunity to connect and idea share with people that are facing the same challenges, that are in the same circumstances and, and things of that nature. So we're we're really looking forward to what we have to offer and there's a ton of information on our website to kind of help you get a better idea of of how our conference experience is laid out um, if you want to head over to www.askaskpcma.org forward slash conference 
you will find a variety of peer perspectives and testimonials from some of our 2018 conference attendees that are looking forward to joining us again in 2019. So you can read a little bit from them as it pertains to their perception of, of the conference experience. Um, and then we have a brochure agenda that kind of outlines, you know, our conference and kind of the timeline of events and what you can expect. Um, we put together a couple tools to kind of help you gain some approval if, if necessary. We have a benefits of attending fact sheet. And then we've also put together a request to attend letter. So um, if you head on over to our website, I think you'll find the majority of the answers that you're looking for there. That's awesome. Yes, that's askpcma.org slash conference. Definitely check that out. It's a conference I've been going to for I don't even know how long, maybe five or six years now. And more and more general managers are going are in the audience. I see that. But if you've got a membership uh, director a, or a membership and marketing professional at your club, they need to be there in Dallas in September. Make sure they get there. Hannah, thank you so much for joining us here again on Private Club Radio and hope to talk to you soon. Thanks, Gabe. It's been my pleasure. We appreciate the support. Come back next month for another edition of Membership Insights. To learn more about the PCMA, please visit them on the web at askpcma.org. Well, that's going to wrap things up for this episode of Private Club Radio. Once again, please visit privateclubradio.com slash marathon to participate in our efforts here at the Private Club Radio to raise money for the children. We need your help. I'll catch you back here next time. And until then, here's to your membership success. Private Club Radio is brought to you by Concert Golf Partners, helping to preserve and enhance private golf and country clubs. Concert Golf has the capital, expertise and private club hospitality experience to help upscale private clubs achieving long-term success and membership growth. For 25 years, Concert Golf has allowed private club members to focus on simply enjoying their club. Visit ConcertGolfPartners.com to learn more about the recapitalization process.